Hey everyone, it's Dale here from Crazy Good PowerPoint. Hope you're having an awesome day. All right, today we're going to create this beautiful new morphic style Gantt chart. And if you're new to my channel and would like to show your support, then please click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my new videos. Okay, let's go. All right, so we've got a new slide ready to go and I have a couple of color blocks here that I'll choose for the different shades of gray that we'll use. We'll right click and we'll go to format background and we're going to change the background color by using this eyedropper and using this light gray. Perfect. Next up, come to the rounded rectangle and we're just going to draw one in roughly around here. And we want this to be 24 centimeters wide. I'll set the height to 1.5 centimeters as well. Let's drag that to the middle till it snaps. And we'll grab this yellow circle and we'll just pull it across till we get the perfect rounded rectangle. Now the first thing I'm going to do is set the fill to match the background. So we'll choose the same color. And then we'll come up to the top and we'll enter our first shadow. So we'll come into the presets. And we're going to use the inner shadow here to make it look like it's embossed into the slide. So we're going to use inside top left. Then we'll come to the color. And in this case, I'm going to come to the eyedropper and I'm going to use my second shade. Perfect. Now I don't need these two anymore, so just delete them out of the way. And come back in here. I'm going to set the transparency to 60%. We'll increase the blur to 20% and we'll increase the distance to 10 points. Perfect. Now we need to put a white sort of similar shadow on the opposite side to give us that same effect we look here. You've got like a dark shadow and then a whiter shadow here. Now you can't actually put two shadows on the one shape. So what we'll do in this case is use the gradient fill to get a similar effect. So we'll come to gradient. And you can see I've already set this one before. So let's just look at the settings. I've got here the first gradient line, which is set at 61. So I'll just make it the 60%. And that is the exact same color as the slide. And then the second one is white. So if I look at the color, just set it to white. There's no transparency or anything like that. And it's set perfectly. And that gives us a really nice effect. Now for this particular Gantt chart, we want to set up five different rows. So I'm going to select this, hold down Control D to duplicate it. Then I'm going to drag it down to roughly where I want it. And once I've done that, I can then push Control D three more times and it'll actually space it out perfectly to what I did for the second one. Great. Now this Gantt chart is going to be covering six months. So what we'll do, we'll put in a square and we want to put in the month labels at the bottom. So it's going to drag in a rectangle and just snap it to the left. And I want to make sure the width is four centimeters. I'm doing this because I want to have six months and because this is 24 centimeters, if I do six of these, it will be perfectly aligned across the bottom. So I'm going to duplicate this by pressing Control D. Then I'll slide this into position until it snaps to the other one and then push Control D four more times. Perfect. And I'll select them all and I'll change the color to match the background as well. Great. Now I'm going to type in the six months that I need. So I'll start with January. I'll keep entering these across. Perfect. Now I don't want that particular size font, so I'm just going to select them all. And I'm going to change the font to Montserrat Semi Bold. Change it to 14. And I'm going to change it to that darker gray, which was this one here. Great. Now we'll come and select the rounded rectangle again, and we'll draw it into the first spot. And just snap it into the location. You'll see the height is perfect, and it doesn't matter what the width is now. And we'll just drag this across till we get the rounded rectangle. Great. Now we'll set this to a gradient fill. And in this case, I'm going to slide this across and we're going to choose purple. And for the other side, I'm going to choose blue. That looks great. And you can see now if I just drag this across by holding shift, it perfectly snaps in there and I can also resize it. And you can see when I resize this, it snaps to the different blocks I have at the bottom. So I can have it at the end of February, at the start of March, or if it snaps to the middle of March, you've got reference points there, which is really handy. Now I'm going to type in the word plan. 
and I'll change the font size. So I'll come to home, choose Montserrat Semi Bold, and I'll change the size to 11. And I'll change the font to the same gray as the background. Perfect. Now I'm going to push Control D to duplicate. And I'm just gonna drag this till it snaps into the space of the other one. And then I'll just push Control D three more times and all the others will be snapped in perfectly as well. And I'll just rename these so they represent different parts of the project plan. Now I'll go to the first slide. And I'm just gonna grab the title and these three circles and I'll just paste those in here. Done. All we need to do now is position our Gantt chart as we need. And it's always good to hold down shift when you slide these across and it stays within the tracks. And I'll snap that there. I'll drag this along to here. And you can just move this along as you want. The great thing is once you've got this design, you can use it, you can move it around very easily and make changes. Beautiful. Now we're ready to have these animate in like we saw at the intro. We want them to be hidden when they slide in. So to do that, we need to create a mask. So what we'll do, we'll come to the slide and we'll duplicate it by holding down Control D. And on the second slide, we'll just grab the rectangle shape and we'll draw a rectangle that covers just this portion. Perfect. With the first rectangle selected, we'll click on each of these five rounded rectangles. Come up to Merge Shapes and Subtract. And then we'll just change the background color to match. Now let's copy that. Bring it to the first slide and paste it in. And it'll be in the perfect location. And I'll delete this slide now. Now if I slide it to the left, it's now hidden under that mask, which is really, really nice. Now what I'm gonna do is a bit weird as I'm actually gonna set all of the morph animations by working backwards. And there's a reason why I'm gonna do that and I'll quickly demonstrate why. If you were to do the morph from the start, let's say I duplicate this slide, and let's say I want to, this plan to stretch across as well as move. And then I set the transition to morph. You'll see that we get this weird sort of artifact happening. I'll just preview that again. And it just looks a bit strange. It's actually better to have your Gantt chart set up exactly at the end part that you want to get to. And then we're backwards. And I'll quickly show you how to do that. First thing we'll do is we'll set the morph transition and we'll change the duration to 1.25 seconds. Now we'll come here, we'll duplicate the slide. And what we're gonna do, instead of using this first slide, we'll come back to the one before it and we'll slide this follow-up away. Now what we'll also do is just delete the text. And by doing that, it means the text will fade in at the same time as it slides in. We'll hold down shift and we'll just drag it till it's out of frame like that. So if I come to this next slide and preview it, uh-oh, now that didn't work, but let's not despair. We can easily fix these things. So what we'll do, we'll come back to the original one and push delete, and I'll show you why. Now, sometimes with morphing, if you come to the selection pane, if you ever come across an issue with morphing where it doesn't recognize the shape, you can easily fix it. So if I select these, you can see on the right where they actually have their different names. What we can do to change the morph is we can rename these with a couple of exclamation marks at the start. And we'll just label this as Gantt 5. And I'll just copy that first part. And I'll just work across these. And I'll just relabel these with different numbers. Perfect. Now let's try that again. So I'll come to the slide and I'll now duplicate the slide. I'll come back to the original slide. I'll remove the text for follow-up and I'll drag this to the left. And I'll come back to this one and let's preview that and see if that worked. Beautiful. Now we can just follow that same process working backwards. So we'll come back to the previous slide. We'll duplicate that one, then come back to the top, remove the text for implement and we'll just drag it holding down shift until it's out of frame. And I'll keep following the same process for the rest of the slides, always coming back and working backwards. I'll be back in a sec. And we're all done. So let's check out our work. 
looks really nice. And I'm sure if you show something like this in your meetings, your teams will be really impressed. Now, if you really like this video and you'd like to see more, please click the like button and also click subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I'll look forward to catching you in my next video. So I'll see you soon. Bye.